Hey, I'm Dylan, and in this video, I'm going to turn this chunk of wood into the most versatile piece of furniture. That's obviously a ridiculous statement and one that I'm not going to be backing up with any evidence, but stick with me and I'll explain how I've come up with that theory. I ride my bike to and from work most days, and I find it a really great time for thinking and coming up with ideas. It's almost like a meditation. It's an hour of my day where I'm not looking at a screen and I'm not distracted. And I can almost go through the whole design and build process just mentally. I guess it's almost like a super productive daydreaming process where I'm also trying to avoid being hit by a car. And the idea for this piece was one of those daydreams that sort of spawned and grew over a few weeks. So the basic idea behind this project was to build a stool with two opposing legs and hopefully make it strong enough that these two unsupported ends of the legs look like they're floating, which is the plan, but there are some predictable issues that pop up, which we'll get to. So up until this point, you've seen me break down the chunk of wood into smaller slabs and I've let that rest for a week or so to let it re-acclimatize. And in that time, I've made a template for the legs out of MDF. So after being re-sawn and allowed to rest, these pieces of wood have twisted a bit. So it's off to the jointer to get them nice and flat again. This particular timber is recycled iron bark, which I pulled out of a Queenslander that was being demolished. I got a really big haul of this timber and this is actually the last piece of that wood, which is a little bit bittersweet as it's really beautiful timber and I've made a bunch of pieces from it but it's extremely hard, it's really dry, and it's also really heavy. So as beautiful as it is, it's pretty unpleasant to work with, to be honest. In saying that this is the most versatile piece of furniture, it's obviously a bit tongue in cheek, but my initial dimensions for this stool were based on the shape of a milk crate. And I'd say that the milk crate is one of the most used furniture items in my life. I've used it as a bedside table, as a plant stand, as a coffee table. I've sat on them at pubs and cafes and house parties. And I've got a few of them in my workshop. They make great little work surfaces and they're great little stools for when I want to sit down and have a breather. So hopefully this stool could fill any of those roles that the milk crate could, but just without me looking like I'm still a uni student. So back to the build. After cutting out my leg blanks, I can get my crusty old tenon cutting sled out and cut some bridle joints. And I decided to use bridle joints for these leg connections as they'll probably be the strongest joints for this application. I also reckon that they're probably one of the coolest looking joints as well. I'm lowering the table saw blade here so it's about, I don't know, five mil lower than the thickness of the workpiece and that's to keep things nice and neat. Imagining this is the outside of the bridle joint. On the inside of the joint, it's pretty hard to avoid this little gap from showing. So cutting the mortise side of the bridle joint a bit shallower allows there to be a bit of a shoulder on the tenon side, which hides the potential for there to be any gap. And it's a bit hard to explain, but as this will be a curved joint, there's more of a chance for that little gap to be visible. After I've finished the slot mortise half of the joint, I can cut down some stock for the tenon half of the joint. And this is just a square piece of stock. I was aiming to creep up on the correct table saw blade height here, but as luck would have it, I actually got it right on the first try, which was nice. This process can also be achieved on the tenon sled I used for the mortise part of the joint, but I decided to do it this way. It's a bit time consuming, but it's pretty good for dialing in the perfect fit. And it really helps to have a flat top grind blade for this joint. It'll work with an alternate bevel blade, but you'll just have to do a bit more clean up with a chisel.
The joints came out pretty close to being the perfect fit, but they're always going to need a little bit of cleanup. Once I've got all those joints fitting nicely, I can come along and remove the shoulder part of the tenon. And after a bit more chisel clean up, the joint's looking pretty schmick. It's really important that these two pieces are perfectly symmetrical, and I figured the easiest way of making sure of that was to glue them face to face. And I'm just putting some tape on these bits so I don't accidentally glue them together. Once that's dried, I can get onto the interesting part of giving this a bit of shape. I can start out by cutting the bulk of the straight lines at the table saw, and I'll finish off the round parts at the bandsaw. It's easy enough to sand down to the outside lines at the spindle sander, but for the inside bends I'm using my template with a template bit at the router table. This wood's an absolute nightmare to route, so I'm just taking it nice and easy and sneaking up on a final pass just to avoid any nasty catches. I need a bottom stretcher for this stool and using the same leg template here gives me the perfect shape that I need. I'm going to attach this stretcher to the legs with a half lap joint, so it's back to the table saw to remove this half of the joint. After band sawing off the bulk of the material, it's back to the router table to finalise the shape. To cut the rebate in the legs, I'm using painter's tape and hot gluing on some plywood scraps for my router bit to run against. In hindsight, I really should have used CA glue or super glue or even double sided tape as this hot glue flexes a little bit. I should have also attached a bigger plate on my router base. This is pretty precarious. Luckily I didn't have any issues, but using a larger base would have been a much more sensible thing to do. And you can see here the issue with the slightly flexible hot glue. It also didn't turn out to be an issue, but it definitely could have. You can see one tiny spot where the router fell into the cut a bit, but for how many silly things I did during that process, I'm pretty lucky that that's the extent of my issues.
Now it's time to move on to the seat slats and for that I'm going to be using this piece of white mahogany. This is a little bit tricky to explain but I'm going to use the domino to cut mortises in the legs and then I'll cut strips of the mahogany and round them to essentially make long dominoes. I do a few test cuts in a piece that's the same width as the legs and I'm just making sure that that bit is perfectly centered. Off camera I made a template for these slats. At this stage I'm just cutting out the rough shape of the slats at the bandsaw. I'm really not sure what I was thinking when I was trying this, but after taking off my stupid cap, I put on my thinking cap and made a template to repeatedly be able to cut out the final shape of these slats. I cut one shoulder of this particular slat to a shape that I liked, and then I treated this as the master shoulder. And I can use this slate here to be able to cut the rest of the slats shoulders to the exact same shape. And it would probably be a fairly heavy cut on the router, but I reckon I could probably get away with not even cutting out the basic shape of the bandsaw. And with a roundover bit and a stop block, I can add the final radius to these slats so that they will fit into the mortise cut by the domino. So before I glue these slats in, I have to round the legs over. And by this point of the project, I was so sick of my router screaming at me, so I bought this little adapter. Rounding that over was still pretty unpleasant and there was no way I could round over these ends without getting horrible splintering. So the only way around that is to hand shape these ends which is actually pretty enjoyable. So this is it sort of dry fit together and I'm reasonably happy with it except this sort of cross stretcher which I still need to route the round over on this is not all that nice so all those bits I mean I knew that was probably going to happen but uh, I've got to do something about that. So what I think the easiest thing might be to do is to just cut this piece down in thickness. So I forgot to hit record when I was span sawing this out but I reckon, I reckon that'll look fine and I'll give I'll give these little bits a bit of a round over as well to start sort of transitions into this. So let's do that. Before gluing up, I give everything a sand, as it will be much harder to do all this once it's assembled. I 
I'm going to pre-finish the slats and the tops of the legs as I know that I'll get a bit of glue squeeze out and it'll just be much easier to clean this up if these parts have been pre-finished. And I'm using painter's tape here to prevent the oil from getting on the parts where the glue will need to go. And I'm using boiled linseed oil here as the finish. And once the oil is dried, I can get on with the glue up. Once the glue had dried, I could do some final shaping on the bottom stretcher. Again, it's just easier to do this with hand tools. And if your tools are sharp, it's usually a pretty enjoyable experience. And it also makes me feel like an actual woodworker. I had one small gap which needed addressing, but a strip of wood, some wood glue and some sawdust and it's practically invisible now. After one final sand, I can apply some finish, which is a mix of beeswax and linseed oil. I use this on a lot of my pieces that don't require a super durable finish. It's really easy to make, it's really easy to apply, and it looks really good. And it's also really easy to touch up down the track if a piece starts to look a little bit tired. I hinted at this earlier in the video, but the design for this tool has a little bit of a strength issue, which to be honest was pretty obvious was going to happen. And for this to be considered a versatile piece of furniture, it definitely needs to be strong enough to be sat on. And to beef up the strength, I'm going to use two brass rods as braces. I'm fashioning a makeshift drill guide out of some scrap wood to help keep the drill bit straight, as I can't fit this leg under the drill press anymore. And for the underside, I'm just eyeballing it as this hole doesn't have to be that deep. The brass rod was a bit of a tight fit, so I used a short length of that same rod to make a little reamer, which leaves me with the perfect fit. I wet sand the brass from 400 grit up to 1200 and then I use some polishing compound on a bit of leather to finish it off. After epoxying in the brass rod I need to pin it. As the rod goes all the way through the hole, I don't trust that epoxy to hold it in, so I'm using a thinner 6mm brass rod to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. 
And after another light sand and the final coat of finish, the stool's done. Thanks for watching.